yesterday. So I told uh, Brandon I would let him preach tonight, but I uh, didn't want to put him on the spot. There was the boy I don't know if he was going to put on the spot. But uh, I began to think about uh, as I was resting this evening and thinking about what we should talk about here tonight. And I believe here lately the Lord has allowed things to happen in my life to, to teach me to rest in Jesus. And uh, now truly learn the rest of the place. You know, uh, the rest of the place is in Jesus. And, and sometimes we have to realize that, that uh, the Lord wants us to rest even though there may be turmoil on every side. And there may be pressure on every side. God wants us to rest. Uh, Brother Benny is going for that uh, surgery tomorrow. Uh, with Brother Benny, I want, you to, uh, I want you to lay back there and rest in Jesus. Because Jesus is going to help you if he's going to watch over. Praise the Lord. He always watches over us no matter what happens. He's always there for us. That's why the Apostle Paul said, Whether I wake or whether I sleep, I shall be together with my Lord. Isn't that a comforting thing? That whether you wake or whether you sleep, you should be together with our Lord. So glad to see Sister Jean here tonight. And uh, we was talking about how good she's looking. And uh, we thank God for you, Sister Jean. And uh, love Sister Jean. Uh, uh, I love, we love everybody. We love everybody here, praise the Lord. And uh, just thank God for you. Uh, I want us to be a family. I want us to be able to depend on one another. And uh, I believe that's what Jesus did. Him and his disciples, they depended on one another. They helped one another. They watched over one another. And uh, the Lord wants us to do the same. Let's pray before we get into this sermon tonight. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you reach down your mighty hand, Lord, and anoint these little to play one more time. Oh, God, and touch your people today, Lord, as we open up your word and begin to share with them, oh, God, tonight. Oh, God, touch us, Lord, from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, Lord, and let us feel your presence. Oh, God, let the people open up their hearts. Oh, God, let them feel you. Let them sense you. Let them, oh, God, identify your presence here tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. In Matthew chapter, in Matthew chapter 11, and verse 25, the Bible says, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudence, <laughs> and hast revealed them unto babies. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things have, uh, are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither know of any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. I begin to read this and I begin to think about how that you can't even know the Father or the Son unless the Son wants to reveal himself to you. Isn't it amazing? That one day the Spirit of God came down wherever you were at, and He enticed you, and He grabbed a hold of you, and He says, Come to me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Isn't it amazing that one that day that you got saved and you become born again into this thing called the kingdom of God? Isn't it amazing? That when you became born again, it was God that wanted to reveal Himself unto you. The Bible says here it's plainly to see that God didn't want uh, just anybody knowing who He was. He wanted to choose 
who he called. He wanted to be able to say, I chose you. I have chosen you. I've called you. Oh, that Sunday morning, that Sunday night, or driving down the road, or, or, or wherever you was at, and you found the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord Himself came to you with His Spirit, and He says, I want to reveal myself unto you. I want to show you that all, everything that I am. He says, I want to show you who I am, what I am, what I'm about. And you come down and you give your heart to the Lord. And from that point forward, you begin to learn about the Lord. And God begins to open up things to you. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that He, he gives it up to babes. He gives His wisdom and power and, and, and His majesty unto babes. That means you can be called into the kingdom. And He said, I'll let it come from the mouth of babes. I remember a lot of times when, when I was younger and I was and Chelsea was younger and she was growing up and, and uh, I would pray about something and, and I just wanted to see if my children was hearing from God. You know, sometimes I test them and they don't even know I'm testing them. Praise the Lord. And, and I'd ask Chelsea something and, and a lot of times, 99% of the time, she would give me the same answer that the Lord gave me. Hallelujah. And I thought, wow, that's amazing how that God can speak to that kid. It's amazing how God can speak to your children. And a lot of times, the children are sitting on that seat and they're raised up in the church and, and they begin to learn to identify the different spirits and the different kinds of spirits. Oh, but there's one thing that they learn more than anything. They learn about the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit of God that gives us that peace, that, that peace that passes all understanding. What I mean, when they're coming to cut your pipes off, you still at peace. When they're coming, hallelujah, to take your stuff away that you work for dearly and work hard for, you're still at peace. Because you know that no matter what happens, hallelujah, God can still give you the power to get that stuff back. As long as you got breath, church, as long as you got life, you have a chance to show somebody the glory and the majesty of Jesus. Do you know it's your job to stand up and be the church and show people the, the image of God? As I was telling you this morning, it's very important for us to, to show people the image of God. How do we do that? Well, we have to come to God and we have to understand the only way that we can become the image of God if God reveals Himself unto us. Praise the Lord. Isn't it amazing how you can go and you can read the Bible and some days you just don't get nothing out of it. It just seems like it's a bunch of words. But then some days you read the Bible and, uh, and it just seems like God opens up the windows of heaven and He just pours it inside of you. It's because those days that God opens up the window of heaven, it's the days that God wants to reveal Himself to you. He wants to show you revelation. Sometimes God just wants you to read the Bible just in general. Just read it and, and just begin to read and read and read it and study and study and study it. And then one day... He'll open up the windows of heaven and before you know it, hallelujah, revelation is going in and when you talk, revelation comes out. Hallelujah. God wants you, when you open up your mouth, to have revelation coming out of your mouth. Church, when you speak revelation, it's because God allowed you to know who He was and He allowed you to begin oh, to know who He is. But the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. We got to learn. We got to learn of Jesus. And the only way we can learn, he said, to whomsoever he revealed it to. Meaning, when he, he said, All we've got to do is come unto me, and I'm willing to reveal my word unto you. I'm willing to touch you. I'm willing to change your life. So I begin to think about how that we've got to learn about Jesus. What about Jesus? How do we learn about Jesus? Well, in John chapter 13, <coughs> in verse 12, 
the Bible says, so after he had washed their feet, he took, hallelujah, his garment, and as he sat down again, he said unto them, he said, no, ye what I have done to you, he said, ye shall, ye, ye call me master and Lord, and say, and say well, so I am, he said, I am, for I am, for I am, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet. Ye ought, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done you. Meaning, he said, I am Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I am your Master, but I don't think that I'm too good to get down and wash your feet. I don't think I'm too good to, that I'm uh, so much above you that I'm better than you. He said, I think, he said, I want you to understand that I want to get down and wash your feet and you ought to do the same. And he said, I've left you an example of humility. I've left you an example of humbleness. He said, I want you to stay humble. And no matter what God does for you in your life, no matter how much He gives you, you've got to keep that humility. You've got to keep that humbleness. When God calls you to do a great thing, or when you obey God and you do something for God, it don't mean that you get caught up in what you've done. Oh, but you get caught up what, in what God has done for you and you and you begin to listen to God and, and that's when you begin to look like God when you're getting down and you're washing people's feet and they're washing your feet. Every time we take communion, we're looking like God. We're looking like Jesus when He was on the earth. Every time we help somebody, we're looking like Jesus. Every time we oh, begin to love on somebody and show them the love of Jesus, we're looking like Jesus. But the Bible says, Very, very, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Listen to this. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that has sent him. Wow. That takes it to another level, bro. Neither is neither he that is sent greater than he that has sent him. If you know these things, happy are happy ye are ye if you do. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do. Do you know what Jesus just told the disciples? He says, the servant is not greater than his Lord. But the one that was sent, which is him, is not greater than the one that sent him. Meaning, he said, I want us to be one. It's his desire to give us the power to be one with heaven. It is his desire for you to look like God, to talk like God, to walk like God, to be the very exact image of God. Oh, church, we need to understand when we come to God, He wants us to be in a place of rest. He wants us to know that we have the authority and the power to be able to speak things in existence. If you've got a mountain in your way, you need to learn to start speaking to them mountains that we're talking about. Hallelujah. Say, mountain, get out of my way. Hallelujah. I don't know about you tonight, church, but I'm saying, mountain, get out of my way. Hallelujah. I'm not discouraged. I'm not ready to quit. I'm just getting ready, hallelujah, to do some of the greatest things that the Smyrna Church of God has ever done. I say, mountain, get out of my way. I'm ready for revival. I'm ready for deliverance. I'm ready to do what God has called us to do. Hallelujah, church. I'm coming to God. I'm walking with God. And I am going to be in perfect rest and peace, believing and knowing in God. Somehow or another, has got it all under control. I put up a statement on Facebook the other day. I said, Lord, I'm pressured on every side. But I know that 
in some word, you're in the midst of it. I know God, somehow or another, in the midst of my pressure, God, you're trying to make me a better man. You're trying to make me a better Christian. You're trying to shape me and show me that I'm not greater than my Lord. Oh, but I have asked my Lord, standing in rest, believing, no matter how much pressure Brother James is on every side, we can still believe, oh, that God is somewhere in the middle of the pressure, that God is somewhere in the middle of what we're going through, that God, somehow or another, is going to bring us out. I'm here to tell you, you may be sad, you may be down, you may be pressured right now, but I guarantee you before it's over, you're going to come out of it. Is in the middle of it. Praise the Lord. And I begin to think about it. How that when we come and we learn of God. He says, come unto me all you that labor and heavy labor. And learn. And take my yoke upon you. Come on you and learn of me. He says, learn of me. Oh church, you know what learning of Him means? It means you're the same. Whether you're in your house or whether you're in this church house. Hallelujah. I have practiced this all my Christian life because I was that little boy on the seat that was disappointed in people when I got older. And I seen them in the get that talks. And I've seen them, I seen them in places that they shouldn't have been. I shouldn't have been there neither. But you know what? They really shouldn't have been there because they were supposed to have been my spiritual leaders. And when I seen them there. Oh my God, I said within myself, Sister Judy, I said within myself, I said if I ever become that Christian, if I ever go back to church, if I ever do what God has called me to do, there's one thing I want to do. I want to obey God whether I'm in the presence of God's people or whether I'm all by myself and it's just me and God. I just imagine every day when I get up that heaven's got video cameras on me. Hallelujah. And the heaven is watching me. Oh, church. And every day I try my best. Oh, to do what heaven wants me to do. When I get up in the morning, I say, Lord, what can I do for you today? Lord, who can I help? Oh, God, can I be somebody's deliverer today? Can I be somebody's hope today? Oh, God, can I speak into somebody's mouth today? Can I move the mountain for somebody today? Oh, God, in Jesus' name, give the Lord praise. Would you about the Apostle Paul, what he said in Philippians chapter 2 and verse, and verse 12. He said, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed. Obedience is very important. See, obedience is one of the most important things that God is looking for in your life. Obedience the Bible says it's better than a sacrifice. That means when God tells you to do something and you obey Him, it's better than you sacrificing uh, these animals. It's better than the sacrifices that was ever sacrificed before other than Jesus' death. Obedience is the very thing that God wants us to learn. And, and the Apostle Paul says, he says, you always obey not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with, with fear and trembling. What you know, some people take that scripture out of context. You try to tell them God's word, and you try to tell them what to do in God's word, and the first thing they say, I'm not listening to that. The Bible says, work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> the Bible says, work it out. No, the Bible didn't say for you to do whatever you want to do. 
He says, when you come unto me and you learn of me, the first thing you're going to learn is humility. You're going to learn to be humble. You're going to learn to wash each other's feet. You're going to learn, hallelujah, that we walk as one. You're going to learn that you're not second best. You are one with me. You're going to learn that I don't walk beside of you, but I walk in you. You're going to learn that I made you the head of the tail. You're going to learn that I can fast any devil that gets in your way. You're going to learn that you're going to be victorious. Woo! Hallelujah. Now to get excited. The Bible says in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice. Hallelujah. Oh, that's the next thing you got to do. Oh, after obedience, you got to learn to rejoice. You got to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. As the preacher was talking last week, when Job had everything took away from him, what did he do? The Bible says he wrapped his mantle together and he shaved his head and wrapped his mantle together and he went to the top of the hill and said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Hallelujah. And all he could do in his loss. Sometimes, church, all we can do in our loss is to bless the Lord and rejoice anyway. And you know when you bless the Lord and rejoice anyway, that it confuses the devil. Brandon, you could have had every excuse in the world not to be here tonight, but you rejoice in your blessing the Lord. Hallelujah, church. What I'm trying to tell you, church, the enemy wants to stop us. The enemy wants to stop us in our tracks. He wants us to get caught up in other things that's in this world. He wants us to get caught up. Hallelujah. In the, in the problems and the troubles and the trials. Oh, that God says, forget about it and rejoice.
will take care of us. Praise the Lord. I went to the mailbox and that blessed people that sends me money at least once or twice a week sent me some money, some cash. No, oh, it may not have been a lot, but then you know it was something. Hallelujah. It was something. Oh, I think it was only $25, but it was something. Somewhere in the midst of all what happened last week, God was in the middle of it.
So he is the one that has revealed everything you know God has revealed to you. You are the Christian you are today because God has revealed his truth to you. Isn't that amazing? I want to say to you tonight, rest in Jesus. This week, rest in Jesus. Brother Benny, rest in Jesus tomorrow. Understand, Brother Benny, God's already there before you get there. And he's honored to say, I felt the Holy Spirit. He's already there. He's already waiting on you. Why like Stephen said, when they were stoning him, the Bible said when Stephen was stoning him, by the way, he preached the sermon, they didn't knock. They fired him. But heaven says, they don't want you out here. Uh, 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 uh. With the earth and, and the land and people rejecting God said, I do. I want you. Hallelujah. And in the midst of the stoning, we find Stephen. He was there. And the Bible said the glory of the Lord. He said, I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Church, why did Stephen say that? Why did he see it? It's because I believe that God the Father is in heaven. When we're going through our pain and our suffering and our trials, I believe God stands up. Jesus stands up. And he says, come on. Come on, Sister Jean. Hang in there, Sister Jean. Come on, Sister Karen. Come on, Sister Oh, Katie. Come on, hang in there. Hallelujah. He's cheering you on. Saying, I'm in the midst of it all. Hang on. It's going to be fine.
Man, I, I couldn't even hurt. I thought, my God, what's going on with this thing? When I began to pray for them, hallelujah, God began to heal me too. My needs in Come on, church.